fix there, a wonderful mix. <coughs> you can't expect that, that to keep the environment uh, clean. The song at the background, may he so rest in peace. Michael Jackson, he called that song the Earth Song. The need for us to have a safer, a better, and a more friendly Earth where we all can live together and stop destroying the ecosystem, stop destroying the environment, and build a world where every one of us would be uh, safe for it. For us, obviously, we saw what happened in Lagos at the weekend. Uh, so much continuous dump of refuse on seawall line, on walkways, on drainages, on canals. And the people, the rich guys in Lekki Peninsula and several other communities on the Lagos Island thought that we are home and dry. Until this morning, they are praying for it to recede. And a friend of mine who was trapped up with his family had to send something that we should keep praying yesterday. That I say, thank God that for the first time I said last night, uh, that's about, about 10 p.m., that they are lucky to have eight hours without rain for the past few days. And should that recede now, the next thing is that he may be spending money somewhere in the mechanic trying to see if his engines can still start. But when they were throwing those bags, the spear water, bottled water, everything, the, uh, uh, the garbages, the refuse dumps on the canal, they never knew that one time the lagoon would get congested and the water would not move in very quickly. And uh, today, after this day, uh, Lagos State is about, thank God, it wasn't a very strong uh, flash flood, just some light flood coming into compound neighborhood, taking over streets and many media houses in uh, that area, even the ones in, in, in Lekki uh, have been shut down. Uh, so, well, we, we wish them well. We pray that it will soon come up for some of them. Their gen sex and others are all completely submerged in water. My name is Ikaro Ata. I hope you enjoy the chat segment with Juliet Dangiwa and Gabriel Kuma and the new segment with Gabriel Kuma. It's now time for us to talk aviation safety. And you know, the other time, uh, uh, I, 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 I told our uncle, I told our guest here, that if I have my way, I will look for a kind of uplifting system that will take me away from takeoff. I won't need to take off. I won't need to take off. You know, sometimes when I, when, when the plane is taking off, I find myself really holding. And when the plane is landing, I feel my intestines are almost uh, dropping away uh, from my system. So if I can avoid the takeoff as well as landing, just some miraculous way. I'm up on the sky, miraculous way. <laughs> okay, but somehow we can't do that. But this morning, we have with us uh, uh, a, a man who is uh, in the estate field, but somehow uh, by, the, by the providence of nature and the vocation and interest and some will say religious uh, divine calling or touch or talent, he found himself talking aviation this morning. That's the man you see on the screen there, Mr. Godwin N.E.K. Uh, his contacts are all there. And for those who really want to follow through, you just need to follow. As we want to go through the program today, we'll be talking about aviation safety. But should you want to contact him, we may not be flashing this all through as we go ahead. That is the number on the screen there, 0802 2995 If I'm fast, you can copy. I hope uh, optically you're strong enough like me to see from a distance here. 0803307046. Uh, the email address is godiek at yahoo.com. Very simple one there. At the website, you can go through that www.aviationfreak.com and the YouTube channel where you can watch all of this live and follow through. It's Aviation Freaks official and at the twitter handle is at aviation uh, freaks we can follow all of this uh, mr godi k is not just there but he is right here with me in the studio a very wonderful morning and welcome to the program sir uh, good morning good morning how welcome. are you today I, I, i'm fine mr godi k yeah, I, 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 our time is flying but i really want to you watch that clip of uh it, it went viral on the social media where there was somehow some sense of smoke in the cabin and everyone had to shout, Jesus, Jesus. And the Muslim brothers were having some Quranic Arabic recitation. And maybe one other man who really, according to somebody, said they want to actually to take the picture for heaven or for hell. I had to be filming everybody. <laughs> you watched that clip? No, no. No, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't okay, know, I left that now. I think I had somebody, you know, uh, discussing that, yeah. but um, I was too busy to. Okay, what, yeah. what, what are we looking at this morning when it comes to aviation safety? We are starting it today. But Everything that has got to do with safety in aviation. Starting from the point an airplane is getting ready to uh, to leave from point A to point A. A lot of uh, investment.
visible things but going, about body. Uh, go, go, going on. Uh, that's the one you see. <laughs> Dispatchers would have already planned the flight for the pilots. You know, the, 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 the group of uh, you know, people they, they call dispatchers. They, are, they already planned the flight. They already have uh, contacted the weatherman to find out you know, the, the, how the weather will be on, uh, you know, en route to, uh, to point B, that that particular flight is heading. All that will be packaged by flight dispatchers and handed over to the pilot. So you, you have a lot of invisible things going on to keep us safe in aviation. Now, um, for you to navigate safely in the skies, you need all sorts of uh, you know, um, you know, equipment. And uh, for you to land safely, you also need... So what we're going to be doing this morning in part one of this, like I advertised last week, um, is such a huge topic that God help us if we finish, you know, uh, 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 four or five you know, parts. Yeah, but we're going to lay the foundation today by looking at uh, the history of um, all the uh, uh, equipment developed right from the 1920s and up until today that we now have radar that is also um, you know, helping to keep us safe in the skies. And after that, we've got to look at everything that's got to do with how to be safe in running our aviation sector, both our conduct as passengers and the conduct of those working at the airport and the, you know, what's expected, the perimeter fence and, uh, you know, keeping animals away, all sorts. It's just, just so huge, uh, Atta. Okay, we, we, so, we, we, so we can start now. Yes, so um, uh, we're going to start, let's first of all understand the, if you give me click one, um, understand what we mean by aviation safety, and then we'll take it from there. That's clip one. Uh, clip one is right there for you. Uh, aviation safety is a term covering the theory, investigation, and categorization of flight failures, and the prevention of such failures through regulation, education, and training. Aircraft design, engineering, maintenance, evolution of. Um, <coughs> you, you must excuse me for my <laughs> for my voice. Yes, uh, aircraft design, engineering, maintenance, evolution of uh, navigation aids, safety protocols and procedures are known to have tremendously improved uh, safety in in, in aviation. Let's go to uh, clip two so that uh, our viewers with time is usually not our friend. That's true, that's true. <laughs> that's <laughs> so very correct. We, we need to run. I, I, I think that looks like a runway if I'm right. Yes, I'm going to. Three, three red lights and one looking white. That's correct. Oh, okay. That's correct. Um, I'm going to explain that to you very shortly. Um, <coughs> uh, it's, uh, now we are dealing with history of uh, navigation aids and uh, instrument flight. In the 1920s, the first navigation aids to be introduced in the USA was airfield lighting, which assisted pilots in poor weather or after dark landings. By 1930s, the precision approach path indicator, formerly known as PAPI, e -A -P -I, um, was developed. The equipment indicated to pilots the angle of descent to the airfield. The International Civil Aviation ICAO, by its standards, adopted PAPI for international use. I would call for um, the standalone photograph of this same uh, photograph on this clay. Okay, the wider one. Yes. Let's, okay, let's the, have the, the standalone the picture of this runway. With of this runway. Three. Four light, I think I could see three right. Three. That's right. Uh, uh, it's showing us, I think, some landing points, if I'm right here. Yeah. We'll have uh, that uh, full clip of uh, just the thing. If I make it look bold, uh, so that we can, we can see it and actually uh, go through it, like go through the way. Go, here we, that's here we go. Now. Here we go. Uh, Atta, take a look at those... Uh, uh, lighting sets. This is the uh, precision uh, uh, approach path indicator, Papi. Now, 
what happened is in those days, uh, I mean, pilots are now really having fun. Oh. The, <laughs> those, those old, you know, pilots of the 20s, 30s, and uh, up until the 50s should be celebrated. So then they are still alive. They are heroes. Should be celebrated. You know, the way they, they, they landed people safely and took off safely and navigated safely was magical. Now, those set of lights are supposed to guide in the, the pilot to keep to keep the appropriate slope. At descent. Yes, the, the, the descent that will terminate him at the threshold. You, you, you find that where you have those uh, bars. Those, yeah. Yeah, for, is it the, for the for second touchdown. bar or the one for touchdown? Between that first... The, the second one. Like that, like that, uh, the, the lights... Approached. If he had two red and two white, he was on the appropriate slope that would terminate him at the threshold. But if for any reason he had a now red, three red one and one white, what it meant was that he was below the slope. If he didn't correct, he was down before the wrong way, and that was a crash. Because you'll probably be touching down where you have trees and, and shrubs, shrubs and and and, 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 and and the rest of them. And then, if on approach, the pilot had a, an angle of descent that gave uh, him more whites than red, maybe three whites and one red. What it was that move the slope? If would touch down at the middle of the wrong way yeah. and won't have enough time to stabilize. Uh, not uh, uh, stop uh, the brakes. Uh, he will not be able to stop. Ultimately, he will overshoot the wrong way and crash into you know uh, uh, brakes on, on the on the ground. So, the, uh, uh, at all times, uh, pilots that use puppy will continue to use their joystick to push forward, keep an angle. Take a look at the light as he approached and make sure that he was seeing the lights as two red, two white at all times. And maintain that. And maintain that. Anytime you, you found one being more than the carried out the appropriate adjustment, either in a push on your stick to edit, or having more whites, or pull up to, to get the nose up and be on the appropriate slope if you're having. Uh, more white. So it must be two red, two white, and then you, uh, you continue on that descent until you come to about 50 meet, uh, meters uh, above, um, not meters, rather, 50 feet, and then, and then you let go. And the skill of letting go was also a different ball game. Every pilot has got his own touchdown skill. But, so, but, 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 but when they, when they touch yeah. down, you may even be sleeping. But when some touchdown, you need to just wake up to some prayers. <laughs> when it, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's correct. When you, when so you, when that's, you that's, that's about the skill of uh, each, each pilot. So let's go to clip three and move on. I, I, th I thought I should explain this, this a little bit. Part of our uh, 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 history so that we know the evolution of our uh, 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 air safety. That's correct. So now we are looking at um, uh, clip three the uh, and the uh, uh, continuation of the of uh, history of um, you know uh, navigation uh, aids and instrument flight from the late uh, 20s several radio aids navigation developed most interesting and popular was the by Jimmy Doolittle what a beautiful name that was in 1929 Used in conjunction with cockpit or base instruments, instrument landing systems, that's the IRS that we know today, became the safest means of landing and takeoff. History has it that IRS was first used by a scheduled flight to make in a snowstorm at uh, Pennsylvania, USA, in, that was in 1938. Eleven years later, in, uh, in, uh, precisely in 1949, uh, the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, adopted ILS for international use. ILS added safety to flight operations. All right? 
So um, uh, click four. Uh, you're going to be able to ask a few questions yes. by time. <laughs> 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 that's, that's right. We are continuing with the history. Then in the 1940s, little World War. And that's just before the war. That's true. Okay. That's true. Or about when he was just uh, starting. When Hitler right. was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Radar was developed and deployed as a landing aid for civil aviation in the form of ground control approach systems, usually, you know, fondly known as GCA. By 1948, the, 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 yes, the DME was added uh, to the array of instruments aiding safe flight operations. Airport surveillance radar was added in 1950s as an aid to air traffic control. During 1960s, the VHF or mini directional range, formerly called VOR uh, stations, became predominant means of route navigation, superseding uh, the low frequency radio ranges and the non-directional uh, beacon uh, formerly known as can you, can you, can you explain a little here? Yes, so, yes. So that, yes. So those who are watching yes. us could come because now you're going fully above aviation freak to a full-time <laughs> aviation <laughs> expert here, full expert here. So yeah. we, can, we can follow you through. That's We've right. enjoyed the, the initial part. We're looking at the landing system, but now you're going to some in-depth safety issues and use of a sophisticated <laughs> a professional grammar here that we cannot follow. Yes, all right. Okay, uh, one of them is uh, the uh, VHF omnidirectional uh, you know, range. Um, it's, it, it is uh, you know set of you know radio stations installed at you know at various locations. This particular one is called omnidirectional in the in the sense that um, uh, parts flew because this one's this is our office that now by the way uh, you know um, where. We're using more of a radar than anything else, you know, right now. Um, as, as, as pilots flew, they got this D uh, da D and or uh, A D da, those kind of uh, you know uh, pops, uh, sound pops that, that came up to them, and then the pilots were trained to understand when to turn left, when to turn right. About the sound language. Yes. A sound language. It, it, it's, it, that's why I say old pilots should be celebrated. If we know where they are, those that are still living okay. should be assembled and celebrated. Okay. If you read through how they moved people around the world, it was awesome and magical. You know. So uh, that is uh, the, 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 the view are for you. But when you say non-directional, those are also radio stations installed to, to help in navigation, but would not give uh, you know, directional signals to, uh, to pilots. So it's all set of radio you know, frequencies that do different uh, jobs. Guiding pilots, the omnidirectional one, the VOR, will tell uh, you know, uh, a pilot when he needs to turn left, when he needs to turn right, you know, in, in, in navigating from you know, one point you know, uh, to, the, to the other. Be mindful that today, these things are so automated that when you feed in your coordinates and feed in all the information you need to do in the, in the computer, as soon as you get up to about uh, 5,000 uh, feet above sea level, time to tune, tune to your autopilot, and you are good to go. You do absolutely nothing other than watching your instruments and uh, and then having and then sipping your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I say pilots of these days are really having fun. But, but, but sometimes, sometimes <laughs> yeah. the pilots that will come in the next fifty years will have totally sympathize with them because <laughs> that time we may likely just be having a, 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 a more planes like drones. You just have to take off, don't need anybody, uh, goodbye. Uh, when you land, the plane will land you, and maybe everything is programmed, and you come oh. down, no pilot, nobody, the plane goes with you, and the plane lands you down. That's how the world is going crazy, but that's fine. Uh, it's, it's absolutely fine. So uh, let's conclude this uh, uh, clip four, because uh, today I, uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing only six, six clips, so that we can have time to really okay. discuss a, a lot of uh, issues arising. 
so uh, during 1960s, the uh, VHF uh, new direction range, the VOR, which I've just explained to you, That's true. Uh, became stations became predominant means of route navigation, superseding the low frequency radio ranges and the non directional beacon. I already told you about it. You know. Yeah. So the, the ground based VOR stations, coupled with the DME, you remember the distance measuring equipment yeah. transmitters, and with appropriate cockpit. Uh, receiving equipment made it possible for pilots to know their radius in degrees to and from the VOR station as well as the slant range distance. Uh, now, don't, don't, don't get too bogged down by uh, some of these uh, things, but I, I'm going to explain you know, what we mean when we say, talk about the slant range. Um, when, you, when you have to when you have two objects, um, you may come back to us. When you have two objects that are, and if you if you have this, if you have this uh, airplane and the pilot is tucked away right there, in the and something is somewhere beneath that side, okay, and the distance to to that point that is on a different, you know, level. Is known as slant range. Okay. All right. That's the range. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the range. That you know, it's a, yeah, it's a plane you know tearing away, and then the, the 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 pilot is sitting right there in the cockpit, you know, looking out of his window. There's something stationed somewhere beneath him. You know, uh, the 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 straight line that gets to that object, at, you know, and the distance is what is known as. Slant, ra slant range, all right? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So um, uh, w w we are done with clip four, aren't we? Yeah. Um, let's get to clip five. Uh, we're going to see if we have a uh, good time today to do okay, all for our discussions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for that history of navigation, so I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to to up to date where we started and how old pilots started and where we are today. So that from next week, we go in deep into all the issues of safety, every one of them. Because, okay, <laughs> if, 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 if you're watching us here, what, what we are looking at is aviation safety, because without going through history, you may likely not know when you see contemporary equipment, you may likely not know what it is. That's right. That, that's really, really very worrisome. That, that's right. right. That's right. That's why I, I'm, I'm trying to bring our viewers to know where we started and how we got to this awesome uh, computerized system that we are using today. Now. Um, uh, currently, satellite-based aids such as Global Positioning Systems, the GPS, uh, make it possible for pilots to know their position with great precision anywhere in the world. That's the awesomeness of the current GPS uh, you know, we have today. Then, arrival of Wide Area Augmentation Systems, the WAS, W-A-A-S, has made satellite navigation accurate enough for vertical altitude and horizontal um, use, especially for instrument approaches as well as en route navigation. Since GPS, and I'm talking about the global positioning system, uh, constellation is a single point of failure. Mark that, mark that, Joe. I mean, um, Atta. Uh, since um, uh, uh, GPS constellation is a single point of failure, onboard uh, uh, initial navigation systems, that's INS, or ground-based navigation is are still required for backup. Now, we need to understand what we mean by single point of, means, of, 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 of failure. Uh, if you give us an expanded uh, version of that photograph, single point of um, failure, uh, you guys will get it straight and clean what, what we mean when we say that something is a single point of failure. If you take a look at that, uh, you know, uh, picture, uh, pi picture as, as it comes. The, the uh, broader one. Yeah, the broader, one. That, that's it there. Good. Can you see the router in the middle? Yeah. Can you see all the computers connected to the router, and, you know, the CPU and the you know, laptop, uh, some other, you know, screen? Systems. Okay. You, you can see them. Yeah. They are all connected to one router. Okay. You know what it means? What it means is that if for any reason that router, you know, gets bad, instantly, 
and simultaneously, all those equipment connected uh, to the router will stop working. Stop working. That's true. That's what we mean by simple. I mean single, single point, point of, of failure. failure. So um, the teaching today is showing us that G, uh, you know because the constellation of equipment for the for the GPS, you know, um, has the weak point of having a single point of, of failure, failure. That some something that once it fails. Every other connected equipment Maybe around it will fail. Will just, fail. Like, just like your extension box. When you, when you plug everything to it, your laptop, your, charge, your phone, you're charging your phone, everything you plug to it, that's once right. that extension box is faulty, that's nothing right. connects. That's correct. So, so that, that one is a single point of failure. That's a single point of failure. So we have, uh, uh, we still rely on some ground-based navigation uh, aids and, uh, you know, in order to uh, just... To be, to, be, to be double sure. Double sure. So as a backup. So that's what we mean by the sing uh, single point of uh, failure, uh, which GPS suffers from. All right. Okay. Let's go to clip six. Clip six is a continuation and the final stage of um, uh, of, of part one. But uh, finally, finally, in June 2014, just the other day, <laughs> uh, as a way of ensuring safety uh, in the air. International Air Transport Association, IATA, I mean IATA A. is usually called IATA, announced that it was working on implementing new measures to track aircraft in flight in real time. That's where we are heading now, tracking air aircraft um, uh, in real time. Um, a special panel was set up to consider a range of options for the actualization of the goal. As a matter of fact, it will amaze you, uh, Arthur, if I, if I turn on uh, my, uh, my special um, application here for, for, you know, for uh, aircraft in flight, you'll be amazed. I can take you to any airport in the world and you see in real lifetime aircraft coming in and leaving. You, uh, their speed, their altitude, their heading, everything with a miniature representing the aircraft. And if you tap on that miniature, it tells you the name of the airline and where it's coming airplane. from and where it's heading. And how many, how many minutes or hours to land it? Real life, real time. It, I've got it on it my it iPad it right now. Risky sometimes for those bad guys. It, it is. That is why IATA is. Uh, working with um, a panel of um, experts to see how it can be used positively rather than negatively. So, uh, I mean, people are really working hard, and um, uh, it's it's our it's our hope that uh, uh, it, it's our hope that um, uh, they will come up with uh, you know something ingenious and. Uh, you know, something that will keep us all, you know, safer in the skies. You know, um, uh, uh, by next week, we will start, w what we've just done today is updating ourselves from the 1920s, how the equi United equipment, States. yes, equipment evolved up until today. Today, is, uh, pilots are having fun. Uh, wherever you are in the world, you, you have right at the touch of a button. All locations that you that you need. The the heading you need to you, if you want to change the direction from point uh, A to point B and perhaps while you're heading to point B you soon you soon realize that no I you need to go to point C. Everything is just right there in the cockpit for you. Including the distance. The you know the the the, the change of uh, but Remind them, you don't make up yourself. As a pilot, you must always contact the control tower that is uh, managing the skies of the area that you find yourself. Because uh, they, they create all the uh, horizontal and lateral separations of aircraft. That's why you can have 
uh, an airplane moving this way and you have another one that's been separated from that one moving underneath and they cross each other safely and nicely in the same way you can have one flying in this direction and another one flying in the same direction but separated you know laterally from this other one and they they, they head to their destination safely, safely you know uh, and nicely without collision this this is 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 been is been awesome job by technologies that have brought us to where we are. But there's still quite a lot a lot you know to be, uh, to be added. Even as a freak of aviation, something is running hot in my head that can make that can make uh, buying your ticket and checking in at at, at good time you know seamless. I'm it's never yeah. it's never done by anyone in the world. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, uh, uh, if, if we come uh, back by next week, uh, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Godwin Ike, uh, what will we be looking at in part two? In, in part two, we're going to uh, the array of every topic that's got to do with in the aviation sector. That is what Click One will do for us in next week. We'll all the subjects. And then from clip two, we'll pick each subject. Guess what? They're about. Each one and tear them into shreds, get them as uh, nicely across to our viewers as, uh, you know, try to eliminate, uh, uh, excuse me, try to eliminate them. Um, a whole lot of uh, okay. te technicalities that will confuse our Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gordy, <laughs> yes. uh, when yeah. you go through aviation safety, yeah, like what we said earlier, it goes beyond just uh, boarding. What we want to do is actually board, uh, take off, enjoy the music in the sky, uh, watch those films in the sky. Uh, nice looking gentlemen and ladies, and when we land, we want to see the person on the other side arrive. Uh, picking us if we are leaving the country somehow when that, we just want to get as i want the pilot keep telling you that it gets promising we are moving also watch out for part two thanks for coming <laughs> thanks for coming thanks again very quickly when we return after the break the program this morning on itv will continue